Welcome to Make a Path Presents. I'm Ronnie Hayes, and today we're continuing with All of Us Are Dead, episode 10 and 11. And then tomorrow we'll check out episode 12, which is the finale. But uh, DoomsdayKingdom.com, issue 5 and 6, up for pre order. Check out the video coming soon to kind of cover this website and the listings, as well as a future video when we're close to print. I'll discuss it in that video, but moving on to All of Us Are Dead, this episode kicks off with them fleeing the school, and him, this is the seed they planted earlier, with his mother rushing to the school, but then suddenly dying, now we see why, now it's revealed they're finally leaving the school, or this is the emotional payoff, and you have his dead mother there, this is how they, you know, uh, reunite and he realizes his mom's dead. The emotional part, I think they did do well. <laughs> Even some of the kids, I don't know if the ones beating on his mother knew that was his mom or maybe they didn't recognize her or put it together. Some of them did meet his mother. Which ones? Oh, the kid that met his mother already died. I, so far. Anyway, um, him lashing out in the very beginning, though, and fighting his friends that were fighting off the zombie, that part I, d I just didn't buy. The emotional aspect, absolutely, that I think they did it well. They've been hiding and running from zombies. They've been witnessing friends and teachers turn into zombies. They know damn well. They've he specifically, and this is where where I didn't connect with the scene. He specifically was telling her that her best friend is no longer her friend. And he got it immediately. I just don't buy that. Even though it's his mother, even though he's might be an emotional shock, I just I'm not buying it. Just because he picked up on it immediately. And in a bit it kind of makes him I don't know. It, it just I didn't like it at all. I'm cool if they would have went with some type of emotional explosion. Maybe even keep that mom in there, like uh then that's it. But him losing his shit and almost getting killed because they were beating on his zombie mom. Nah. This emotional stuff, they did good, though. You know. And they're covering it with some flashbacks. Sometimes it doesn't work. It worked here. Uh, so they make it out. At the same time, the archery team is making out, making it out. And they end up crossing paths. Now, I think one of the girls... And this is a cool moment. Now, her brother is in the other group. But they kind of pass by each other first. And I don't even know if they they recognized each other. The brother definitely did. But she acted like he was nobody. That bit was weird. But maybe she was just trying to stay uh, stay alive. Uh, but one girl breaks off and gets separated. And uh, she gets munched on. And the rest of them get to this school. And it's covered. He gets separated. That's another thing. We constantly see people getting separated. And they either... It either does something plot-wise or they run into the bully. I think they, they've done that several times already. And he's one that we'll see what happens with him. But um, they're locked up in here. And now the two groups that were separated have a chance to, for the whole show, have a chance to unite and kind of conversate a bit, get to know each other a little bit. They have a bit of conflict I didn't really buy into because they had a disagreement on how to build the cage. Yeah, this girl, she had gotten separated and she gets chomped up. A virus must have a consistent pattern for us to create a vaccine. Scary. So there's a little bit of conflict that I didn't buy into. Some of the government stuff I wasn't all up into. Uh, the dad I'm rooting for, him to show up, that had me going. Some of this episode, though, with them being trapped, I, I felt like it did kind of slow down a bit until they figured out, oh, we got this plan. Again, outside of uh, some of the conflict and some of the voting, the voting, for some reason, felt like Squid Games. I think just because of their uniforms and they had a voting scene in, the, in there. Uh, an extra long scene with Chew, you know, finding food. I thought, I get it, they're hungry, but for me, it's just, it's dragging a bit. Uh, up until they get out, and this is their plan, which once, when they were explaining it, I'm thinking, okay, they got this type of plan. When they put it into execution, I immediately thought, oh, hell no, this is stupid as shit. And it is kind of a dumb plan. You, I don't know. 
there's no weapons as well. Like these people are in a sports room. There's got to be a way to craft some type of weapons, something sharp. And still we're not dealing with any weapons. And it leads me to wonder, is Amer are Americans like just, are we just like brutal, <laughs> you know, like Viking brutal beasts at times? Because on episode two, we'd be sure the, the bookworm would be sharpening a shank out of a, a friggin' a hockey stick. Uh, I don't know. I just, and they know this isn't something like, ah, oh man, what, what are we up against? These people know, and they recognize zombies immediately. They have zombie movies in their world. It's, it's their world is the same as ours. So they know go for the head. You know, the head is it, yet they constantly, even when they have an opportunity to strike them, they're hitting them in their stomach, backs, arms, sides. And I have a feeling it's just to keep the actors safe while they're having these choreographed scuffles. But it just doesn't work for the content because you'll see in moments like this, they have zombies and they need to beat them down and they're just beating on their, their back. You know, why? They should be going for the head. We didn't get one so far vicious scene of someone just, you know, one hit after the other, just trying to take the zombie down, but hitting them in the head. And then it slowly cracks their head open, blood gushes at first, and then, you, you know, their head splits open and maybe the zombie gets limp and, you know, then they crush their head. We might have had one, you know, kind of on screen, but more people should have been going for the head. But we, we do have one kid who... Uh, the kid who came up with the idea, it ends up getting him killed. He gets bit on his hand. He jumps out to help push it. And uh, again, for me, it just reinforces it was kind of a stupid idea because you're creating a cage with wheels and you got a whole bunch of zombies and you know they're all just going to bum rush the cage and you're going to have to push against their force. I don't know. I mean, that's the best they got. That's the best they got. But, um, uh, he gets chopped up. They end up making it out to the end of this door. The bully shows up and they do that old fake aru where is it the bully or the dad on the other side of the door? And I thought this was cool, but it had me a little worried. It ends up being the dad. I'm not going to leave you in suspense. And I thought that was great. You know, she runs out. It's her dad. And it's like, oh, shit. OK, finally, you know, we got somewhere cool. However, I felt like they rushed with the adult to keep, at least it feels that way. Every time an adult shows up, they kind of rush what's going on to get it back to kids only. And at the end, by the end, I see why, or at least I feel like I can see why the writers did that. But for me, it took some out of it. I kind of wish maybe there was a way to get the dad in and reunite a little earlier and have a full episode or two with the dad present. Anyhow, the bully shows up, has this moment with with uh, the other Archer kid. And it, it, for me, it's just filler, but it was interesting seeing the, the Archer kid, you know, handle his own. We have a cool moment. It's tension. They're getting away from these zombies. And this is the part where I knew something's coming up that I am not going to like. Uh... They get in this, uh, right here, they get in this area where the neighbor boy comes over and he helps out, you know, future stepdad. And I thought, okay, that's cool. We're going to have a little more bonding, but they're making me nervous because you can already see the dad is going to sacrifice. You see it coming a mile away. The dad just reunited at the end of last episode. We're only five, six minutes in to the current episode. The dad reunited. It's been six, seven minutes-ish, right? And then we get this. Go. Again, you see it coming a mile away, but maybe in 30 minutes, 40 minutes, I mean, if if they want to let the emotions simmer, give it a, a next episode, you know? Have, have them teach her some things, things that she can utilize for survival later on, you know, show a little more of their interaction, especially since the world is definitely different now. Their world, what they've been through, their trauma, their relationship is going to be different after the trauma. Build on that a little bit. But we get six or seven minutes. And this is where the show pissed me off. Now, I like the emotional payoff. 
And I like where it goes at the end of this episode, but I just feel like, man, they could have done, they could have got rid of some filler throughout the season and move this up a little somewhere. Anyhow, I mean, they didn't have to be in the school the whole time. They could have been in the school for most of it and then have an episode where they're out of the school, making it here with the father. And then an episode where we get to this and that way you have at least room to breathe for the emotions. Let it simmer. This is the part where you lost me. He shuts the door. He shuts the door. Has all this time to shut the door. What's the what's the, the thing he's trying to do? Protect his daughter. He's going to sacrifice his life to protect his daughter. But why? There's no immediate zombies that he's closing the door from. He doesn't have to sacrifice himself right here. He locks it. No zombies still. He has a moment with his daughter. Who are you? No zombies still. There's no, it doesn't, it's so illogical for him to throw his life away right now. Uh, uh, I might have, I might have just revealed I fucked up. Okay, I take that con back. I did fuck up. Uh, because this is a bite. They got me. Those bastards got me. When he took off his belt, they revealed he had a bite. The whole time I'm sitting there thinking like, wait, why is he shutting himself? I'm going to leave this in the review. Maybe some others missed it as well. But the whole time I'm thinking, why would he shut himself in there? I mean, they rushed to sacrifice him. My complaint still stands that the dad they killed off way too fast. Uh, he got in there and he's already bit. This is, uh, I've, I've complained about Walking Dead doing this you know, once every two seasons or so, but the show is doing it 17 times already. And we're only on episode 10, you know, episode 11 where someone is bitten off screen. Everyone's getting fucking bitten off screen, but that's cool. I missed it. I give them props him sacrificing himself in this very moment. It's it. The scene is a lot better now. They still killed him off early, but the scene is a lot better because he doesn't want you know, even if he gets out, then he's going to be a threat to her. So, okay. I got caught in 4K. Fucking that up. So he locks himself in. He gets chomped up. They make it out and they get into, it looks like a, a building that's under uh, repairs. And this is where they're going to sit for a bit while we have, I guess it's like a, a voiceover of humanity from the creator it slows down a bit we get some emotional bits that are hitting but also kind of uh, a little bit slow uh, but this is where they're getting prepped up for the bombing and at this point i felt they were rushing to get into something and then the bully shows up and that got pretty exciting the best friend gets thrown over they're trying to pull him up now they're hoarding the zombies in to blow them up and something happened that I thought they would do for a cliffhanger, but it's done in the middle of the episode. And also, this girl was totally wasted. I was hoping we would see her in a death that was, uh, that was, because it's, uh, what's the best way to word it? Uh, it's, I call it uh, ruin and reward. It, there's a balance between it. Between it, Like you ruin the audience. And I mean, it's both enjoyable. It's not a ruin as a negative. It's a positive ruin and a positive reward. But if you have too much of the ruin, uh, it turns into a negative. Meaning um, you gave us an exciting storyline where this girl did some, you know, deceitful shit and she got one of the other kids killed. She killed him, basically. She infected his wound, got him killed to turn him into a zombie. Now, that's some deceitful shit, and she's now like a villain character, but they tried to redeem her having her want to bring food. So you have that ruin in there. The balance would be the reward, having her killed in a cool way. And for me, again, I miss the dad getting bit on the hand, I know she got eaten up by the bully, but I thought they would bring her back as a hybrid and we would get some better death because her just getting bit partially off screen as a death and then we see her episodes later dead, for me it didn't work. But here's where the bully gets his revenge, bites him. 
It turns badass later, though, but he kicks the bully off. They have an emotional moment. There's a lot of drama here. They are... So, someone in the comments says it's definitely uh, heavily infused with uh, K-drama and uh, Korean drama. A and some of that, it's a bit overdosed for me, I'll have to admit. Some of it does work. He comes out, I'm the happiest kid in school. It's like, that's cringe as shit. But I could see how some people watching it like a light movie, a popcorn flick could get a kick out of it. Here's the moment where I thought was pretty badass. Something else is coming up that's super badass, but this is the moment that I thought was badass, but they should have saved it for when he wasn't bit. He's bit now. It's over for him. He's either a hybrid or he's going to turn totally or he's going to die. Three choices, neither one of them are as exciting because a hybrid, once they get close and smell him, they're not going to attack him anymore. A, uh, um, uh, what was the other? Oh, uh, dying. Wait, did I say three choices? Yeah, it's either hybrid or he dies. But let's say he's human and this happened. He's running from these zombies and he takes this jump. If he was human and there was real... Uh, there was something of substance on the line, like him losing his life, him or one of the other lead characters. Oh, I thought that scene would have been badass if he was, you know, because again, he's bit, so it doesn't matter. He's a hybrid. Once they get close, it doesn't matter. Or uh, they're going to eat him up. And uh, he's already dead, a dead man walking anyway, or he's going to get killed. So it doesn't, none of it matters. But if he was human and he did a move like this, I would have been like, yo, that was fire. So, so it was cool. Do I have that too loud? It was cool, but it still was, it was, there was some, uh, weight to the scene that was kind of missing for me i dig it i thought that was uh cool uh, um yeah they make it out and here's where i got real concerned for the story we got half an episode left and a whole nother episode coming up he has this one-on-one -on -one fight with the bully i'm not scared of you either <laughs> And I, I liked it. Stabs his ass. But the part where I, I thought... And here's the difference, though. Remember when I said, for me, the movie stopped being emotionally... The, the emotions and how I connect to the movie changed after episode five? Because now it's more like a lightweight superhero movie instead of a heavy you know, gritty, grounded, zombie flick, emotional. Well, if this, if there was no hybrids and it was gritty and grounded and it didn't have that kind of superhero element to it, uh, this ripping out the eye would have been like, fuck, some Game of Thrones in the zombie genre type shit, in my opinion. Because the bully guy, and again, he doesn't have to be a bully. He could still lose his eye. And that is probably greater motivation because he's still alive he's still human you know he loses his eye i i don't know why he, his bones can grow back but his eye doesn't grow back you ever notice that his wounds heal it it appears his he broke broke his back his leg his wrist his he sh he snapped his wrist go back and look at that he shattered it and then they show it and there's like a little uh, wound left over and his bones are like healed again. Well, why doesn't his eye heal up? So it's, this is why some of it, I'm just like, uh, with the extra hybrid shit, I can have fun with it, but it's not so like he just got clobbered with a brick and they just do a, a little bit of crack sound effects. And then I guess he's healed. He, he chiropracted himself anyway. So this guy is pissed. He goes to get his eye back. Yeah, that's the scene where it was two human care If it was two human characters, I would have been like, yeah, that's badass. Yeah. Get out. I'm almost done. Anyhow, I, I would have been like, that's super badass. And so they, they bring up the bombs. Uh, they blow it all up. I'm serious. One minute. 
And no, give me one minute. And uh, this is the moment where I'm like, we're about to run to the store. I got to get something. But I think she's worried uh, they close early, but she's thinking of the other store. Uh, this is the moment where I had some serious concerns. Didn't care about the war guy. I know they're trying to show all the all the pressures of making the call, blowing it up, killing civilians. I just didn't really give a shit about much of that. Uh, having the lead go out like this, uh, I don't, again, I don't know. For me, it was kind of a, a downer. It was okay. Uh, you know, it was kind of cool. But I, I'm, I'm expecting something, some type of reveal after this. But that's how they leave it. That's how they end it. Like, he's he's dead. He's done. Right? Maybe with the possibility. But I see this as neighbor boy is donezo. He's dead. Anyhow, I don't know why he dragged the bully down the hole with him. Because if he just... It looked like if he just left the bully there, he would have been blasted into nothing. Yeah, this whole long scene. I think that's probably why I didn't like it. Some of those scenes, they drag it out long. Like, they show him talk with his family and yada, yada, yada. And I get it. You know, you you saw him in the room doing his general shit. And, and then now he's with his family, his kids, and you're showing this humanity side of him. But you know where it's going. He's doing all this prep work to kill himself. You see it coming 10 minutes ago. And the whole time, I'm like, just do it already. Because I just don't care about this character. Anyhow. Yeah, I don't know why he drugged the bully with him. You would think... Just leave the bully there, kick the bully forward, and you get down the hole. I thought he was going down the hole to try to hopefully have a chance to survive. Where is it at? Yeah, right here. I'm not sure. Unless he used the bully as a shield, maybe that was it. I'm going to accept it. I'm going to view this like he's using the bully as a shield. Because that, for me, is badass. Because look, the bully can't. He's stuck. He's His senses are being overloaded. Yeah, if he uses his... Um, if he used him as a shield, I'll take that. They look both pretty much fucked. <laughs> yeah, they look both fucked. But again, as a shield, I'll take that. Anyway, there's one more episode left. We'll check that out for tomorrow. Let me get to the, to the store so my daughter can get her her uh, mac and cheese she wants. She likes this ultra spicy hot mac and cheese. I don't even know how humans can eat that shit. <laughs> anyway, thoughts and opinions down in the comment box. I'm done talking. It's your turn real quick. I'm working on the Halloween uh, 2018 Flaversaw review. I had a lot of work coming up, though. That's why I wanted to do some of these reviews to at least get content coming out. And stay tuned for a stream. I might, be a, I might do a stream soon to touch base with you guys, the viewers, so we can talk about some things coming up. Thoughts and opinions in the comment box. I'm done talking. It's your turn.